Your body's posture is what helps carry you throughout your day. Whether you're sitting at a desk for prolonged hours or you're out there in the gym hitting your sets and repetitions, your body's posture is going to determine how you feel in your body and how you respond to the environment around you. Three common factors that affect your posture are, number one, a sedentary lifestyle, number two, muscular imbalances, and number three, any joint or muscular injury you may have experienced or are currently experiencing. I'm Coach Paulina, and today I will be taking you through a routine of eight movements that you can start incorporating into your routine to help you recognize any imbalances that you may have. This routine is also a great way to implement more movement in your lifestyle, and it's a great way to start recognizing how you feel inside your body. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started with chin retractions. Go ahead and stand tall, relax your shoulders, slightly brace through your knees. From here, we're gonna pull your chin inwards towards your neck and then relax. A good cue is having your fingers right on your chin so you can actually feel if you're retracting enough and really activating the front side of your neck muscles. We're gonna go ahead and do 10 repetitions, nice and slow, holding for about two counts in that retracted position. Good, last few here. We're just focusing in on the chin, retracting, try not to move the rest of your body. Last two. Great work. Next, we're utilizing the wall to really help open up your chest, stretching out the muscles that are constantly in protraction. So we wanna open up by using the wall. If you have a corner, that is going to allow us to do both arms at the same time. If you just have a wall, we're gonna do one arm at a time. Let me show you the corner option first. So you're gonna stand tall and close to your corner. We're gonna start with your palms facing the wall and inch your way up so your arms are out to a T. If you wanna take a step closer to the corner to feel a deeper stretch, feel free. We're gonna go ahead and hold 15 to 30 seconds. Deep breathing into your uh, chest muscles and shoulder muscles. Standing tall. Big exhale, stepping away from your corner. If you have your corner still available to you, let's go ahead and do two more rounds. I'm gonna go ahead and show us, um, if you don't have a corner available to you, we're just gonna do a wall stretch instead. So let's get ready for your next set. We're gonna take one arm, so this is my right arm here, and I'm gonna start facing the wall, and then slightly and slowly rotate away from my arm to get a similar stretch as the corner, but now we're just focusing in on that one side. So again, repeating 15 to 30 seconds, just with one side. And remember, you're regulating the deepness of your stretch, the amount that we're stretching in that area. So if you need to kind of lay off and do less of a rotation here, that's also an option. Breathing in through your belly. Nice work. Good. Uncoil, retract away from the wall. Take a second here. We're going to do one more round. So for a single arm, I'm going to switch over sides. If you're using the corner, one more round with your corner stretch. All right, let's go for it. So whenever you're doing any sort of stretching, make sure the rest of your body is active and present within the stretch. So I just caught myself wanting to kind of lean into one hip and give up <laughs> within my posture. So you want to make sure we're active and standing, focusing in on the specific area that we are stretching. Good. Uncoil, 
shake it out. Next up we have wall slides and we're gonna add in that chin retraction that we just went over together with the wall slide. So we're gonna face the back side of your body to the wall. So my heels are pretty close to the wall here. Hips, back side of the shoulders and back of the head. I'm wearing a hair clip so the back of my head is not necessarily touching and you want your head to touch. And make sure your chin is retracted just like we had practice. So to start your wall slide, go ahead and lift your arms up overhead. And from here, you're going to slide your elbows straight down, stacking your forearms vertically and feeling the back sides of your shoulders. You might start to feel the front side as well open up. But we're targeting the rotator cuff and activating through your shoulders, getting that deep wall slide stretch. We're just gonna do three total. We're holding for about 15 to 30 seconds. And when you're doing these on your own, feel free to take a little bit more time if you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm very sore, I can stretch and hold for a little bit longer. Feel free to hold up to one to two minutes even. Good, reach up and overhead. Let's go ahead and slide down for your second rep. Keep that chin retracted. And the goal really here is to try to keep the back sides of your hands intact with the wall. Elbows too are making that contact with the wall. <sighs> Belly breathing through your stretch. <sighs> nice work. We're feeling the back sides of the shoulders. Let's do one more round. Ooh, yes, deep into the shoulders, you got it. And such a simple stretch can be done throughout your day. Getting up and away from the desk, getting in some wall slides. Good, go ahead and recover, shake out your upper body. So we just really opened up the neck the shoulders and chest, and then the back side of the shoulders. Let's go ahead and take it down to a quadruped position, so that's hands and knees. And from here, we're going to go into a hip tilt. So with hip tilts, go ahead and arch your low back, and feel free to relax your feet here. We're gonna arch your back, your lower side, and then tuck your tail really round through that lower back. The rest of your spine is just in neutral, so we're not focusing necessarily on the rest of the spine like we would with cat and cow. We're just fixating on the lower back and the hips here. So with this hip tilt, when we're tucking the tail, I want you to think about squeezing your glutes and pressing, activating from your lower core. And then as you come into that arch, still hold on to that squeeze within your glutes, but arch enough so you feel that lower back activate. So those spinal erectors, the muscles that keep our spine in line in whichever posture you are, those are activating as we go into that arch. Go ahead and tuck your tail, squeezing those glutes and holding on to that tension and then arching. Let's do one more round of each so that gives us five total rounds. And then as soon as you get into the position, we're holding for a good two Mississippi and then switching. Start to recognize any tightness that you may have and remember, try not to push past discomfort. Good, go ahead and recover. Loosen out your spine and your posture. Next up, quadruped mid-back opener, except in your quadruped position, go ahead and send your hips to your heels. From here, your arms are straight. We're pushing the ground um, with our hands, so really keeping that tension. Let's go ahead and take your right hand to your right ear, bending through that elbow. 
From here, reach your elbow up towards the ceiling and allow your mid back to really twist and open. Go ahead and recoil back to center. Let's repeat this for four more repetitions. So we're just going a little bit more smooth, holding at the top for two counts. Nice work. Go ahead and take a big inhale as we rotate. Exhale. And inhale, good. Inhale, rotate. Let it all out. Inhale, back down, good. Last two. Good, last one, inhale. Good, walk it out, shake it out if you need to. We're gonna get set with our other side here. And notice if you are contracting that lower back to, um, to compensate for this posture. If at any point you feel like you need to come into quadruped, to give your low back a little bit of less tension to go into your rotations, feel free. So just giving you options here. All right, let's get set on the left. Big rotation. Inhale as you rotate. Exhale at the top. Inhale as we rotate back down. Exhale to reset. Ready, this is rep three. Try to isolate that mid back here. Last one. That was some awesome work. Go ahead and recover just for a second here. We're gonna come up into a half kneeling hip flexor stretch next to really target the lower body. So tall kneeling position, go ahead and take your right foot forwards. And we're creating 90 degree angles with your joints here. Just as we practice those hip tilts before, go ahead and try to find neutral. So right in between both positions and now slightly tuck your tail. When we slightly tuck our tail, you might be able to feel that hip, stretch, hip flexor stretch already within the left hip. We're gonna slowly lean forwards and avoiding any sort of arch within the low back, it's only really going to allow you to lean forwards a little bit. From here, we're gonna take that left arm up and overhead and slightly reach towards your right side. So from your hip flexor all the way up to your fingertips, we're creating that long line of tension, feeling a deep stretch. So just 30 seconds here, we're holding this one for one round, and then we'll switch. <sighs> Breathe into your hip flexor. Keep actively reaching up and over with your left arm. Slowly recoil and recover. If you need to give your knees a break, feel free. Cool, next, your left leg is gonna come up. Finding neutral with your hip tilts, right there. Slightly tuck your pelvis and let's lean forward. Reach your right arm up and overhead slightly reach towards your left side. Create that long line of tension all the way from the fingertips down to the hip flexor. And if you're feeling this stretch really deep, you'll feel those quads too. Actively breathe through your stretch. Looking good.
Last few holds. If you feel the shakes, that's good. And recover, great work. Next up, we're gonna come down into a hip bridge position, planting your feet down on the mat and slowly your, rolling your way all the way down. So your back is flat, back of your head is flat. And then two, I want you to bring your shoulder blades together, really open up your chest, press your shoulder blades through the ground. We are ready to hip bridge. Find your neutral hip and turn on your glutes. The way that we do that, think about squeezing your butt cheeks and pressing your feet through the ground. We're ready to hip bridge. With a big exhale, bring your hips up towards the ceiling and we're gonna hold onto your hip bridge. From your hip bridge, you're going to lift one leg off the ground. Go ahead and replant and lift the other leg off of the ground. So this is called your hip bridge march. When we're coming into the march, it's going to be very, um, what's the word, tempting to shift our bodies from side to side. So I want you to challenge yourself, really push your feet into the ground and tap into the backside of your body to help you stabilize the march. Let's go ahead and do six more. That's gonna give us 10 total. Big exhale. Last two. And slowly come all the way down. Give your knees a slight hug here, just for a little bit of a release from that lower back. What that hip bridge march did was it turned on the glutes. It also helped those hips open up as a unit after that half kneeling stretch. Go ahead and slowly roll up. We're going to go into a child's pose stretch. So we're flipping up onto our knees. Bring your big toes together, open up your knees out to the sides and walk your hand, hands one at a time to reach out in front of you. Go ahead and bring your forehead to the mat and connect with your belly breathing in your child's pose position. <sighs> 